Hi, today we're going to look at the SQL revision for grade 11. And um, if you look at the SAG document from the IB, these are all the things you need to know in grade 11 um, for your SQL. So I'm going to try and cover all of this in, the, in this presentation. Um, so first of all, let's start with the aggregate functions. Remember that they are all three letters long except for count. So pretty easy to remember. There are five of them, max, min, sum, AVG, and count. Let's look at them in more detail. Um, max, and this little dog is max, so I had to put a picture of him. But anyway, to find the maximum of a value in a table, you would select max, brackets, mark, say there was a field called mark, as biggest mark, we'll put an alias in because otherwise it comes up as expr001. So you'd not like to put a nice heading at the top of the column, so biggest mark, and then from table marks. Min, if you want to find the smallest temperature, for example, in a table of weather conditions. So um, you will use min, so select min brackets temperature as lowest temperature from table weather. So you can see that when you use an aggregate function, it's a good idea to use an as and then a name so that you get a nice column name at the top of the, um, above the, the, the item that you have um, selected, the aggregate function. AVG will find the average of all the values in a table. Select AVG brackets mark as average mark from table marks. And then sum is to find the total. So to find the totals of all the values in a table. So for example, all the amounts paid for a civvies day. Select sum brackets paid as total paid from table civvies day. Then count. Count is, um, if you've used it in Excel, it just counts the number of records in a table here. If you put a where clause, it will only count the ones that satisfy the where. So here we've got select count bracket star. You see, you don't need to put a field name in. You can, you can just put br um, brackets star. That just counts the records as number of students from table marks. And then you can add a where clause. So if we want to know the maximum mark for all the grade 12s, select max bracket mark as biggest mark from table marks where grade equals 12. Now the next thing we'll often do when we, um, when we use the aggregate functions, so that's min, max, avg, sum and count, we'll often to, we want to show each grade's mark. So say we want to find the maximum mark for grade 7 and grade 8 and grade 9 all the way to 12. Now you could put a where clause, so you could say select max brackets mark as biggest marks from table marks where grade equals 12 and then change it to 11, then 10, then and so on. But that's quite schleppy, so there is a much better way. And the solution is to use group by. So you will put select grade comma max mark as biggest mark from table marks group by grade. And that will show you grade seven and their maximum mark, grade eight and their maximum mark and all the way down to 12. So it will list each grade and then the maximum mark for each grade. So you see that you say select and a field and comma, and then your aggregate function, and you group by that first field. Select grade, group by grade. That's how it works. Let's look at another example. Um, if we want the minimum temperature, we had the minimum temperature for the whole, all the, the whole table, but if we want to work it out for each day of each um, month of the year, we could say select min bracket temperature as lowest temperature from table weather where month brackets date equals one. And then we could change it to where brackets month equals two, where bracket month equals three, and so on. But obviously very tedious. The better way is to group by. So we will now 
Better solution is to select month bracket date, comma, min temperature as lowest temperature, from table weather, then group by month bracket date. And do you see that we are grouping by? Whatever we put in front of the aggregate function, that is the thing we group by. Now, you cannot use a WHERE clause with the results of an aggregate function. You can't have your whole aggregate function with the group by and then say, put it another WHERE. That wouldn't work. That's not right. So what you have to do is use HAVING. When after group by, you put HAVING. If you only want to display, um, a, you want to filter certain records, from, um, from or certain results from your aggregate results. Okay, so if we wanted to show the minimum temperature for each month, but only if the minimum value was less than 10. Okay, so all the cold months. So we would go select month brackets date, min brackets temperature as lowest temperature from table weather. We group by month brackets date. We've seen that before, but now we add having min brackets temperature less than 10 and that will only show us the, the months where the minimum temperature was less than 10. Here's another example of the having. Um, if you wanted to show the number of CDs with a genre containing the word pop, okay, this would be from a CD table, you would select genre, comma, count star, as num CDs from CD table, where genre like star pop star, grouped by genre. That would be fine. Your where clause applies to the genre, not to the aggregate function. So you can put the where clause there. But for the having, the having applies to the aggregate function. So you have to use having. So select genre comma count star as num CDs from CD table, where genre like star, pop star, group by genre, now we add having count bracket star greater than 10. So this will, you can see, it's only shown us the records where the minimum, where the, the number of CDs is greater than 10. Okay, when you want to concatenate strings together, you can use the word concat. Well, that's actually a function called concat, select concat, brackets, first name, comma, surname from table student, or you can use the word and, select first name and, then we want to put a space in, so we put quote, space, quote, another and, and then surname from table students. Same result from these, both these, um, these commands. So to generate a random number between 0 and 0 0.99999, um, that's just less than 1. So you must use select RND brackets and put a seed in the brackets. Now the seed is just to tell um, SQL to, to kick off the random number. You know, it's like a, it starts off the random number generation. If you don't put a seed there, then you're going to keep getting the same random number for all the records that come back in the result set. So you, you and the seed, what it really is, don't type the word SEED, just choose one of the fields from the table that you're um, selecting from and put the field name in there. So um, that will generate a random number between 0 and 1. And then you can go to the next slide. So we've seen already select R and D brackets and a seed being a seed being a field name. Uh, it generates a random number between zero and one, but it doesn't ever get up to one, although the random number could be zero. Then select R and D brackets seed times 10. That will now we're multiplying whatever random number we get by 10. So we'll get a random number between naught and 9.999. And then if you, um, cast that using select int brackets rnd bracket c times 10 plus 1 so the int there just chops off the decimal part of the random number that's been generated times 10 
it chops it off so you get a number between 0 and 9, and then we add 1 so that we get a number between 1 and 10. And that's how you can generate all sorts of random numbers. Then the round function, select item, comma, cost, comma, round, cost times 1.14. You can see that cost times 1.14 is going to give you lots of decimals. Um, so we round it. That will round to no decimal places, the way it is at the top. You can also round to however many decimal places you want, like the one at the bottom is round bracket cost times 1.14 comma 2. We'll give you two decimal places. Then the next one, select baby name comma age in months comma int brackets age in months slash 12 as years from baby underscore table. So age in months slash 12, that um, will give you um, a, a real number, but int only returns the integer part of the number. Okay, and obviously the age in months could be 14 months. So we don't want to know, okay, the baby's 14 months. We want to know he's one year, he's one year old. If he's 14 months or 18 months or 20 months, he's still one years old. That's what we want to know. Then mod, similar to mod in Java, select number mod 2 from table numbers. That will return a 1 for odd numbers, 0 for even numbers. So mod, just like in Java, it returns the remainder of the division. And then for integer division, you can use a backslash. The forward slash is for normal division. Backslash will give you integer division, which I hope by now you understand by from Java. If you divide an integer by an integer, you get an integer answer. So here, if you put a backslash like numbers backslash 5, the division is done, but the decimal part is chopped off. So the answer is a whole number, right? So if the number there at the top was 9, 9 backslash 5 will give you 1, not 1 1.8, just 1, okay? And then the now function, select now bracket bracket, that gives you today's date and time, so the current date and time. And then if you only want the year, you can say select year, brackets, now bracket brackets. That will give you the current year. Select month, bracket, now bracket brackets. Gives you the current month. And select day, bracket, now bracket bracket, gives you the current day. You can also return the current hour and the current minute. And then if we have a date of birth that we want to calculate and we want to work out somebody's age, we can say year, well, select year bracket now, bracket, bracket. So we're getting the current year. And then we, we subtract the year of their date of birth. But remember that this might not be quite accurate because if they haven't had their birthday this year yet, then it won't be accurate, okay? It will give them, make them look a year older. So um, to, to, to get a more accurate date calculation, what you should do is you can just say now bracket bracket minus date of birth. And what it, this does is it actually works out the days. Now bracket bracket will just, if you put it in a, a um, in a calculation like that, it will work out how, how many days old you are, or how many days old this person with the date of birth is. And then if you divide it by 365.25, remember the 0.25 to take care of the leap years, then you get somebody's precise age. You have to also make it into an integer to get rid of the decimal part. So here's the explanation for the calculation for the accurate date. It's because dates are stored as the number of days, hours, minutes, and seconds since the 1st of January 1900. 
So if you take the current date, remember it's in days, hours, minutes, and seconds, and you minus the date of birth, which is also in days, hours, minutes, and seconds, and then you divide the result by 365.25 days, you will get the number of years difference between the two dates because you've divided by the number of days per year. And then you just remove the decimals, which will be a lot probably, remove them using int, like we've done at the top. Um, you remember the len method or, or function, it's to find the number of characters in a, in a, in a string. So select len brackets name from table names. Mid. Um, here we've got select mid um, quote timber comma two comma three. That is going to count. The first letter is the T. The second letter is the H. So it's going to count H and three letters H E M, and that was what it will return. Very different to the substring method in Java. Please take note. It's it's simpler actually in SQL. And then select left. Francine, comma, three, will give you three letters, F-R-A, and select right, Mascan, comma, two, will give you A-N, the rightmost two letters. So goodbye, that's all for today. You can watch the grade 10 lesson on SQL as well. Well done for learning today.